Hi friends, I'm introducing the Sky Boat Song in our time together today. A few friends from our community have asked that we learn this tune, and uh, it's just a lovely air to play. We'll follow our usual format. I'll walk us through the tune slowly so that you can see my hands. Um, the tune is a smidge longer with two separate parts to it, and so I'll walk us through those first. Uh, after we review those, we'll, I'll share the play along with Scott's section, where I'm um, standing, I'll play slowly through the entire tune. And I'll play through it without ornamentation so that you can actually learn the core of the tune. And my encouragement is that you'd play through it a few times with me so that you could like really seat this tune in your brain and your fingers. Um, we'll then talk about any difficulties I think you may experience some ideas for ornamentation and expression, and then what we know about the history of this air. I'll provide a link at the very top of the notes to this video so that you could access the page on my website from which to download the music and tabs, if you use those. Um, <clears throat> I've selected what seems to be one of the most common settings for this tune and listen to a number of folks playing it and you know its appearance in tv shows and movies and uh, have chosen what seems to be one of the more popular and fun ways to play the tune uh, a challenge is that the tune normally goes chorus verse chorus and so that's the setting I'm using. And some people have it transcribed as chorus verse only. And uh, so you could play it that way if you want. But I'm doing chorus verse chorus. And some would describe that as A, B, A. So here is uh, that first part. Uh, I'll just walk us through the, the focus of the chorus. The chorus goes... I neglected to say I'm using the Carbony with close finger spacing wide bore for today's um, instruction. Now the core of the verse um, goes like this. sets and you pretty much know the well you know the entire tune except for catching some of the uh, transitional notes so um, here is the entire tune chorus verse chorus in the play along with Scott section
So the challenge for me <laughs> is just playing that straight. Uh, like I always say, it's important to learn the core of the tune, but it's one of those tunes that right away you're just wanting to add some ornamentation and expression in. Uh, let me tell you a couple of things from a transitional note standpoint that I mentioned that, you know, when you're playing through the chorus the first time, and then you get to the end of that first line, And at the end of the course, when you play that through the second time, um, a lot of people like to uh, leave that down because you could just sit on that mellow low D or you could transition upwards. Like you do actually at the end of the tune. And then, speaking of the end of the tune, uh, that's how I did the end of the tune, is you're going E, F sharp, G. Or you probably want a vibrato that to just sit on it. And uh, a number of transcriptions also had that walking back down to the D so that you could just sit on that resonant D uh, and leave it just that uh, extra haunting ending. So your call, my friends. So let's think through uh, difficulties. Um, there are no crazy high notes. Uh, the difficulties is again, this is another one of those tunes where your challenge is gonna be uh, breath control because you wanna sit on some of these notes and you just want them to resonate into the air with a, with great beauty so you're gonna to have to work on tone quality smooth note transitions and your breath control so that you don't enter one of those low d's that you're wanting to hold or or the b's or the a's that you're wanting to hold and run out of air while you're doing that so watch where you're breathing get a breath at the right time uh, so that you're actually able to sit on things and like each, the middle of each line has either uh, walks up to the D so you want to be able to carry that out um, and or it walks to the A And notice I'm actually transitioning from difficulties into ornamentation and expression. Uh, this is a great tune to use some uh, transitional, some gentle um, cuts and taps, a, a nice smooth roll, or really uh, some of these notes you're just going to want to slide into them. Listen to people singing the tune and you'll hear that slide they're doing in the voices. You can easily emulate that on your whistle. And um, so uh, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, some vibratos at the end. It's just great. And I'll, I'll play it through kind of as a demonstration and an experimentation because I think it's important for me to share some of what I'm feeling and experimenting with as I learn and express a tune. I, I get a blast out of playing things for you, but I also uh, even more like to describe the process I'm going through because I believe that helps you even more. Um, so just have fun playing it and making it your own. So the Sky Boat song is a Scottish air. Uh, some describe it as a folk song, and that's, that's fine. That, it doesn't really matter from a category standpoint. The song celebrates Bonnie Prince Charlie, who in 1745 rebelled against British rule in what we refer to as the Jacobite Uprising. Um, unfortunately, in the Battle of uh, Culloden, um, Bonnie Prince Charlie and his forces were defeated in April of 1746. He then escaped uh, with the help of uh, some of his supporters 
um, from mainland Scotland, well, <laughs> really far north west of mainland Scotland to the Isle of Skye. And the lyrics, uh, the whole song tells the story of his escape. And that's why it's a bit haunting because it's like his escape to the Isle of Skye. Great, uh, great lyrics. Uh, hold on, we'll get into that in a minute. So he has become uh, a symbol for the Scottish people of courage and their, their deep-seated desire to be free from uh, British rule. Anyway, the song existed at some point. Uh, we don't know um, exactly. Um, Anne uh, McVicker Grant, who had gathered uh, some stories and tunes, found and published the tune with a set of lyrics um, and named it uh, Speed Bonnie Boat. Um, uh, apparently the song never really, really took off and now that, that's quite old. Then in the middle of the 19th century, Harold Bolton combined the existing lyrics of the tune with uh, a different melody. And so Bolton used what was an 18th century tune called Cuckoo of the Tree, <laughs> which the lyrics were about unfulfilled love. Oh, surprise, surprise, right? That's, that's a dominant theme. Um, it was only when Bolton combined the new melody that we know today with the lyrics that the song really kind of took off because the, the new melodies what uh, launched the song from a popularity standpoint and set it apart. Now, not, <laughs> it gets funny, not long after Bolton published his version, Robert Louis Stevenson rewrote the lyrics to make it a little smoother and, uh, and that really set the the song apart even further but the lyrics have always been about uh bonnie prince charlie's escape to the isle of sky um it, the <laughs> the funny thing is both the lyrics it, same theme but the lyrics and the tune have changed over the years um <laughs> you can easily online find the lyrics I, i'd encourage you to do that now you may know the tune and the lyrics from the TV series Outlander and the series used um, the tune Bolton uh, assigned and the lyrics by Robert Louis Stevenson. So that's that's what in the Outlander series. Uh, the tune has been in an early movie and uh, it's one of those tunes that everybody and her brother um, has has uh, has played and it is in the public domain so you're free to do what you want with it um, it's a beautiful Scottish ballad air folk tune whatever you want to call it I'd love for you my friends to uh, to play it and enjoy it um, chime in with your experiences uh, comments and questions and I'll play it uh, for us um, in kind of a demonstration, conversation, um, learning uh, thing, video in, in a few days. Until then, this is Scott Shade. Happy Lodi whistling, my friends.